this is Jane Lo, and I'm at the ST Engineering Innotech 2023 here in Singapore at Marina Bay Sands. And with me today, I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Professor Huang Guangbing, who is the professor at the mm. Nanyang Technological University here in Singapore, as well as the founder of MindPoint I. So, Professor will be sharing with us uh, anything and everything about AI, given his extensive experience in the field of AI, as well as uh, where we are today, how we're going to get to where we want to get to. So, thank you so much, Professor, for your time today. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks. So, Professor, you have extensive experience in uh, the field of artificial intelligence. You have been through, I guess, the second AI winter. I'm not sure whether the first, but uh, AI has a long history for more than uh, uh, half 60 years. 60 years. Mm -hmm. And famously, I guess, Alan Turing came up with this uh, paper called Can Computers Think? But AI actually has been, I guess, in our minds for longer than that uh, with um, the novels and stories that we hear from, for example, Frankenstein, right? So given your extensive experience and where we are today in terms of generative AI and all the excitement about generative AI, Tell us, what are the major milestones that get us to where we are today? Actually, the, uh, this is a critical euro for new technique. So AI actually is already the past the three uh, stage of development. So from 1950s to 1980s, which is I call is the warm-up stage. Oh, right, okay. So then most of the uh, so-called ideas uh, had been proposed, imagined during that 30, around 30 years. Okay. Uh, so AI concept also proposed at that time, but most of the, during that time, uh, we don't have enough algorithms. We don't have the uh, enough theory to support such kind of the uh, uh, so-called new technique. Or maybe the computer power was not there too. You're right, but we have the imagination. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's great imagination. Uh, but we don't have data, we don't have good algorithms. But from 1980s to the, the early this century, 20, before 2010, so what, what I call uh, so-called research-driven. Research driven means that we have the uh, air, air grim already is sparking here and there, especially in the universities. Mm. When we say AI, it means AI algorithms. So algorithm means methodology, it means That's ideas. Right. So a lot of the uh, algorithms which are, which are very popular now is already there during that 30 years from the 1980s to early this century, but we don't have enough data. But since the 2010, I, I think the, uh, we are going to the real AI euro. That is oh, the industry okay. driven, means data driven. Right. So when you say data, that means, means opportunities behind. Like, uh, you know, so if we do not explore the uh, opportunity behind the data, then we will lose the opportunities. Those industry participants, mm. players, they will see the real value mm -hmm. which come from data. But when we have the data, who will explore the value behind the data. Of course, human is just one of the key players. And we need something else to do it, that is AI. So then since that 2010, I say we are going to the real AI euro, means driven by data, driven by industry. So, so, so I think that is the key points. Oh, right. So okay. now we are going to the early stage of AI euro. Okay. Right. So if I <coughs> understand you right, um, from the <coughs> 1950s to the 1980s, <coughs> uh, we have lots of imagination, but there <coughs> was no uh, scientific or robust mathematical foundation to support <coughs> our imagination. And then after that, the 80s to 2010, you say, uh, we start to <coughs> have algorithms, but we are lacking data. Yeah. And now we are in the e era where we have everything. We have data, we have algorithms, it's a matter of putting it to use, all this uh, It seems like all, all in one box now. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, okay. I see the 2010, because that is, I think, is a, is a, is a is very important year. Uh, actually, it's thanks to the contribution from two teams, two type of teams. Okay. One is, of course, most of people say deep learning or AI, right. whatever. Actually, don't forget, the major contribution one of the major contributions actually from Stephen Jobs. So most of us, they say, when we talk about AI, people may not mention Stephen Jobs. I guess I'm the only one in the world to mention Steve Jobs. 
Because when that Stephen Jobs come out of the iPhone, yeah. iPhone actually, you see, what is the major functions, the breakthrough from iPhone, is bring the computer and phone together. So before iPhone, all of us are isolated. Mm. So whenever you take a photo, whatever you want to share with others, you have to go home, you have to go to lab, you mm. have to go office, and then choose the uh, uh, photos and share with others first. The second, before that, is the digital camera is very big. That's right. It is not as small as, okay. as yeah. iPhone. So we, we, we can't bring that big phone, uh, big camera every, every day, anytime, anywhere, right? right? But with iPhone, you can bring camera anywhere, anytime. That's right, yeah. And then they link to the internet, share with a photo, whatever. Right, okay. So after iPhone, then you have the uh, Facebook, WhatsApp, WeChat, mm -hmm. whatever. So that means the most powerful things linked together through iPhone through that time. So then you can see, generate a lot of data. Right, I see. Okay. And all people, all the whole world connected. So, so now I say since 2010, we say we are going to the AI golden euro, means data driven. Without data driven, you don't have value, right? That's right. Without the industry driven, you don't have value, mm. right? So who drive that? Stephen Jobs. So in your perspective, from your perspective, Steve Jobs really uh, accelerate this uh, uh, story, storing, processing of information as well as distribution of information, creation of information, sharing of information. Yeah, he, he seems like he, need, he built the infrastructure to let all of us connected. And then AI team come in and say, I have the, uh, I have the solution for you. Right, and then the uh, Anibaba, then the rest coming, apps also coming. Say, oh, we can share there. We I, can create build the ecosystem. I don't, I don't disagree with you because I think if we look at the history of <laughs> um, Apple, which I guess uh, Steve Jobs is a founding member of, or the uh, right, and <laughs> Apple really could <laughs> start this whole internet uh, era that we are in now. So if you look at the history of what he has been involved mm. in, I don't disagree with what you are saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to get your one point. Mm. You talk about you know, the fact that uh, the, during, between the 1950s to the 80s, we don't have algorithms. But a lot of great ideas really sort of started there. Like there was a concept of neural networks. And I think that was very, very important to uh, set the foundation of where mm. we are in terms of deep learning and machine learning. Uh, uh, Okay, I, I am, you don't may, may, maybe I need to clarify further. Uh, I don't say is there is no algorithm between the 1950s to 1980s. The uh, uh, concept for deep learning mm. already proposed during that time, mm. but but most of us still still in a in a trial stage. Right. So yeah, that it's like means a is, concept. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, okay. a, it's sparking idea right, here right, and there. Right. Okay. Most of them are isolated, mm. so not linked together mm -hmm. yet. So so that takes some time for us to understand the neural network structure. Mm. So AI actually they uh, come from two main uh, type of the AI. One is rule based. The other one called later work based. Uh, most of us call connectivity based. So, so now we are actually converging. So until 1980s to before 2010, so people started to connect them together. But then, of course, lack of data. Ah, okay. So <coughs> if I understand you right, you, yeah, <coughs> what you're saying is that there were a lot <coughs> of different ideas and a lot of different, I guess, groups of uh, research and development going on. And yeah. it's not until the 1980s that people start to share and exchange uh, ideas. Yeah, before before 1980, many people actually thought whether, say, artificial neural network works or not. Because where is the algorithm? People just uh, propose such a kind of little work, et cetera. So how to prove in theory? So very, very difficult. But it but started from 1970s to 1980s, even 1990s. People have started to prove in theory the capability of neural network and started to mm, propose okay, that algorithm, say like a backpropagation algorithm. Most That's of right. the algorithm we are using now proposed in 1980s to 2010. Mm -hmm. But before then, you see, it was laying the foundation, yeah. I guess. Research actually is also very interesting. Research stage in like a stock bucket is going up, <laughs> up and, and down. down. So there is a several stage. The first stage, when they have the idea, so people have thought, 
whether it works or not, right? So it may it, it gets some time for people to understand to 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 follow it. So then people understand is it going up? Oh, it it works. But after some time, the people say, so what? So that is going down further, right? What I call a further validation, right? So you have propose, proposal stage, and then go to validation stage. People spend some time to think about it, right? But after then, going up. So actually, the AI is the, the same, right? So 1950s to 1980s, uh, people actually in the... Exploration the, stage, maybe. It's actually crashing, clarifying, fighting, whatever. So then after then people say, oh yeah, it it, it make it makes sense. Mm -hmm. How good, how great it is. N no idea. Mm -hmm. So since 2010, I say, mm -hmm. oh, so great, mm -hmm. right? Because everything mature mm -hmm. and combined together. So I think 2010 is uh, isn't good. It's good a pivotal. It, it, sort it's of a pivotal. Point. Yeah, it's a it's a turning point. It turning point for so this is why I call AI actually come out a new euro. Uh, is, you see, we, we have agriculture revolution, the industrial revolution, so now why this is called yeah, intelligence revolution. Intelligence revolution, <laughs> yeah. okay. So now I want to ask you about um, your presentation. You talk about three sort of cases. You talk about mm. smart factory, I guess, smart mm. manufacturing, um, where autonomous mm. machines have been used. Mm. And then there's also an example that you propose, which is uh, autonomous, I think, maritime tr um, uh, transport. Yeah, yeah. And then the, there was another mm. one, which is in smart, smart homes. Yeah. But one use case, I think a lot of people will be interested in understanding where we are now and where we can get to is autonomous driving, right? Because we have been talking about it for <coughs> so long. Yeah. So <coughs> where are we now and can the latest LM large language model mm -hmm. uh, help us to get to where we want, which is, you know, the level six uh, driverless cars. <clears throat> okay, when we talk about autonomous vehicles, I think we can think of from several aspects. So, so, so several years ago, I, uh, one of the company talked to me uh, whether uh, they should spend a lot of money invest uh, in autonomous vehicle. I say not necessary. Uh, I think the most important not technique is a legal issue, oh. ethical issues. Legal so, issues? Yeah, once the legal and the ethical issues are solved, then new technique will come. Legal and ethical issues, I think it's like a chicken <coughs> and egg question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, so if you have good technology, <coughs> then maybe there's not so much legal that takes some time. <laughs> ethical oh, again, issues. Again, take some time for legal <laughs> authority, whatever, to understand, uh, understand it and then you know, the law, the whatever regulation come out, right? So it, it takes some time, but once all these problems solved, the new technique was coming. And then new technique come, or your, your solution already obsolete. And also exactly. become, become, right. yeah. become lightweight solutions. And then you have to go to <coughs> the second phase of negotiation all over again <coughs> with new techniques and new technology and yeah. new ethical issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then, yeah, that's true. So I think the uh, so-called autonomous vehicle definitely is the future. But then don't, do not expect that everything can be done in five years. Oh, no, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then talk about technical development. I, say, I, I, I think I also several interesting part. The first, do not say develop everything by you. So finally, definitely become open source, like Linux, mm -hmm. right? Each, each team just do, one, do their own job. Mm -hmm. Say so someone for smart engine, someone for smart tires, someone right. for smart wheels, et cetera, right? So open source, definitely for we autonomous week will be the future. So this is the first thing. The second thing is when AI can generate some kind of code for you, so then you do not develop from scratch, right? You can use using GPT, whatever, AGI to do it. So we say AI grew, grew up increasing exponentially. So some, some value of the investment may go down exponentially. So we have to keep the pace, right pace in automatic vehicles for mm, technical investment. Okay. So, yeah. right, so if I may summarize what your, your insights, ethical and uh, legal issues has to be solved mm. first. And then second thing is that for developers mm. to co-develop, mm. I guess, yeah, different, yeah, yeah. Pe different teams develop uh, specialized yeah. in, in their areas of uh, mm. speciality. And that uh, there might 
be a lot more upfront investment required to get mm -hmm. to where we are and do not expect a sort of a autonomous vehicles in five years time. Yeah, so, so government and the manufacturer, they have to work together, right? Mm. Step by step, progressively. Then technical and part and the deployment team also have, also have to work Mm -hmm. together. So we, that means we do not expect that everything can be done in one time. So you, you invest, uh, say, hundred billion dollars, everything can be solved. No, this, this is not that way. It's, it's different like a chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. So, no, I, I was just thinking, you know, uh, with this uh, uh, chat GPT and generative AI, maybe it can mm -hmm. solve some of the challenges that we have in autonomous mm -hmm. driving, which is, you know, True. How, how can you respond very quickly to, say, you know, in real time to events happening? Oh, maybe I, I can give you one scenario. So in the future, so when they say, just imagine car like a human. Mm. Car, car actually is a robot. So then you talk to the car, pure interaction like a chat GPT mm. with you. That's right. Yeah, they, they can even come out some like in some voice in, in a very natural way. Yeah. So it's just a natural, you, you talk to the car in a very natural way. That's Natural right. way. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, so basically, I consider say uh, vehicles manufacturer. So don't don't just manu manufacture the vehicles. The more important, I think, intelligence is an ecosystem. Is a business model. Right. Right. It, it's not production line anymore. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I think, uh, like you say, this intelligence <clears throat> era um, <clears throat> is you know we have so much data and <clears throat> with a lot of data. There's a mm. lot of possibilities, mm. Mm. but to realize all these possibilities, mm. it requires, I guess, as building partnerships, it's not only mm. the technical uh, uh, implementation details that we have to pay attention to. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Professor Huang, for taking us through the very, very quickly, the history of AI. I, I think we can spend a lot mm. more time on it, um, but unfortunately, uh, we have you know, we are coming to the end of our podcast. So the history and also how we can look forward to say maybe the future applications mm -hmm. of AI uh, through one example of autonomous driving. But again, we can of course go to other use cases, but we, have, we are running out of time. But so thank you so much, Professor Huang. Uh, thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm.